Spots, how much uh, did you go back on last year against UCSD and mm -hmm. think about how good of a game that was and how much of a challenge this potentially can be on Wednesday? Uh, I think just the environment last year, you know, uh, playing at UCSD, uh, a lot smaller of a gym than Viejas, and they packed it out. And, uh, you know, it was loud, great energy. Um, I actually don't think I played that game last year. I, I think I was on the side. Um, but, you know, we, you know what it is with those cross-town rivalry games. Everyone's going to come trying to prove something. So I think uh, all of us are pretty excited for it, especially being the first game of the year. Are you excited to show them what Viejas is like then? No, definitely. I mean, I love the team that we got. We got a bunch of new guys. So same with them. They have a lot of new guys on their team, too. So uh, I don't know if it's going to be the same because they lost a lot of people. We lost a lot of people. But I mean, the competitive nature is still going to be there. Nick, what have, what have the guys told you about the game last year? Uh, man, I think just listening to Coach AG, uh, just, it's just about respect. Um, like, you know, Miles said, a lot of new guys on both sides um, for, the, for the teams. But at the end of the day, we all play basketball. We all love the game. And uh, we all showing up to win. So it's just about respect. Uh, always respect the opponent. I actually watched the game last night. And uh, they got a really, really good team. I know it's not the same team. But just the offense they run, they're really dangerous offensively. So just keying in on those details and uh, staying locked in and just having you know a lot of respect for the opponent. Nick, what was the emotional hurdle you had to clear coming off the injury? Man, uh, probably the unknown. Uh, I really didn't know, um, you know, when I'd really be back. Uh, always an estimate on, on the on the time frame, but um, just trusting God and keeping my faith in, you know, the the sports medicine team here. Um, I'm able to, you know, play on opening night. Maji, you guys been together at training camp, trying to get everybody together to see it together against a new opponent. It was, you know, an yeah. exhibition. But what did you learn about the progress that you guys have made being together in that game on Wednesday? I think that we're just a team that plays super hard and like when you're a team that plays super hard and your your main focus is defense it's so much easier to fix things defensively which is I think really going to be our identity this year with you know starting a six three point guard like Nick me BJ both being very on ball defenders and then we have a lot of length behind us like Magoo and Gua so I think defensively we're just going to be a problem. When you got a guy like that as a rim protector back there, what, how does that change the way you guys are able to play defense on the young perimeter? Uh, it definitely makes it harder for the opponent. You know, we got Nick and BJ up pressuring the ball, and they're thinking that they could just throw any pass. And we got Goon back there, Jerry back there, me back there, ready to deflect passes. So I think, uh, you know, it takes a lot of stress off you also defensively. You know, you, uh, we don't want to get beat defensively. We don't want to get blown by. But, you know, when you have a seven-footer back there that can block any shot that they put up, you know, that's also a good safety net. Does that help you gamble a little bit? Maybe try to jump a passing lane every now and again because you know you're not going to be completely caught out of position. <laughs> I mean, personally, I, I'm not as good at, in, the, in the passing lanes as Miles Bird, but he, he does more of the gambling. But um, I mean, yeah, we could be a little bit more risky uh, when you got you know Magoon back there ready to block shots. Uh, you can have some fun. Nick, how does the kid from Florida wind up at San Diego State? Connections, or was it just the identity in the program? What was it? Uh, uh, just the respect for, uh, of the program. Um, I wanted to go somewhere where I could win, uh, you know, be myself, have fun doing it, and, uh, you know, and take on the challenge. Miles, um, I'm sure you saw about Matt Bradley's announcement. Mm -hmm. um, you got to know him, you got to play with him. Yeah. Were you surprised by that? Were you aware, I'm sure you're aware of some of his mm -hmm. internal issues that he was having yeah. last season. I wouldn't say I was surprised by it. Uh, you know, coming in as a freshman, Matt Bradley, it was, they we used to call this MBU, Matt Bradley University. Like, we, I knew what it was with Matt Bradley. He's a, one of the greatest dudes I've ever met personally, on and off the court. Uh, he has such a competitive nature to him. And, you know, me and Matt Brad were actually switch teammates this summer. So I, I had been with him a little bit this summer, too, and we stay in contact. So, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't say I was entirely surprised by his move, but, you know, I think he had a great college career, uh, and he's going to have a great life after basketball. Did you understand some of the things that he was talking about in there? Uh, definitely. I wasn't here I wasn't here his first year at San Diego State, so I missed out on, you know, whatever would have happened that year. And, you know, when, when you're winning and you're going to the Final Four, it looks good for everybody. So uh, the Matt Brad I know is a great dude, and he'll always be a great dude to me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what it was behind the scenes, but... You know, I'm grateful to, to have a guy like that that I can call my friend. Nick, do you remember facing, obviously you do, Matt in that Final Four game. I was watching some video the other night. Thank you guys you. were going back and forth. <laughs> what, what was that like? 
I mean, I think he had like the first 15 points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, obviously, you know, just a bucket getter. Um, I didn't get to know him personally, but just, you know, the respect that he gets from the fans, uh, his former teammates. Obviously, you know, had a great career, great dude, and um, I wish him the best. Do you have to deal with adrenaline, like in these situations, an opening night, or like a senior night for you, Nick, it's the first time in front of a filled VA house so arena? Like, do you have to manage your adrenaline heading into a game? Is that possible? I mean, I think for me, more than anything, uh, every time I get to play basketball, I get the butterflies because I just love the game so much. And I love to be out there and, you know, um, I mean, for example, you could even think about, you know, Matt Bradley, he just, you know, retired from the game, so you can't never take it for granted. So um, to be out there, I always get the, the butterflies, the adrenaline is always pumping, and I just love to visualize myself out there, you know, having fun, playing hard, and, you know, hopefully getting the job done. Miles, what, what's your sense on um, Wayne's transition coming from USD here? I know he was in Swiss League off mm -hmm. in the summer, and I'm sure you got to know him. He was kind yeah, of I know, I know about him. Bit. I know about Wayne since I came into San Diego. Uh, you know, the way Wayne plays, it translates to SSU basketball. You know, he's a defensive-minded guard, um, has a great mid-range pull-up. That's probably the best thing about his game. Uh, every time he shoots that, everyone on our team says that's a layup. So, <laughs> no, we love Wayne's pull-up shot. Um, and, you know, Dutch knows who to recruit, and I think Wayne fits perfectly with all of our personalities. Just a great dude, hometown kid. So I'm excited to see what Wayne can do in the SSU jersey. Could you sense his excitement the other night? Oh, um, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And plus, he had been out a little bit with the hamstring injury. So uh, seeing him back out there was definitely a rush for all of us, honestly. Anything else for the student athletes? Do you have any sense, since there are a lot of new moving parts in this team, how long it might take you guys all to gel as a unit? Um, I'll just say for myself, speaking for myself uh, and my perspective, um, I mean, I think we, I think we gel, uh, you know, in the offseason, you know, just in terms of as a team, you know, bonding. Um, when it comes to the details of the game, I mean, there's going to be a lot of teams out there who've been together for a long, long time who, you know, still got to clean up on the details. So. Um, in terms of gel, I think we gel, but it's, it's about buy-in. And when we buy into the details and other things, every single possession, every single night, every single practice, um, we could be a special group. And uh, that could happen tomorrow or it could happen, you know, a month a month from now. Um, I mean, I hope it happens tomorrow and we keep building, but um, you don't want to gel or not necessarily gel, but you don't want to hit your peak too early. You want to be playing good basketball in around March. So uh, that's the goal. Miles, just a question about learning curve. Being a young player, mm -hmm. so many good ones that come through the program, develop and really look at the camp. What's it like to be a young guy to walk into a quality program? And what's the toughest learning curve to be able to take that step to this level? Uh, I think it varies. You know, like we got freshmen this year, but we also have a whole new team. So there's a learning curve for anybody that comes into SSU defensively and just you know how we carry ourselves as a unit. Uh, I was fortunate enough to where. I'm coming in as a freshman, and in my position alone, there's a sixth year, a fifth year, and a fourth year. So I had uh, ample older veterans on my team that could, you know, lead by example. And we have vocal leaders on that team, like Agueka Rope, who's now one of a, on our staff, uh, Keisha Johnson. So uh, for me, the learning curve was definitely there, but I got to kind of slow play my learning curve because I didn't play my freshman year. So I was able to just, you know, take in as much information as possible my freshman year and try to apply it that next year.